Hey guys, it's Mama J. Welcome back to the channel. It sure is great to see each of you again. I have been so excited to bring you tonight's video. We're talking Reptile Room Tour 2020. And yes, this is big. We're going to go over each of your favorite animals from crested geckos, to leopard geckos, bearded dragons, turtles, fish, frogs, snakes, and many more. I think it's something that every animal enthusiast will really enjoy. Now, if you're new to the channel, I want to welcome you and tell you that this is a channel where we talk about the passion for reptiles, amphibians, and betta fish. So I sure hope that you will consider subscribing and joining us on our journey. So let's get to tonight's tour. Welcome to the reptile room. I've been so excited to bring you guys in, let you see each of the animals again and see the changes I've made in their tanks and upgrades. Now, in this particular room, I have a total of 33 animals, including the fish. And as you go through the little closet area here, I've added in three more animals. And on through the bonus room, there's four more, including a special guest that you'll also get to meet outside. So let's get started on our tour. As you walk in the reptile room, this is my wall of crested geckos, as you can see. It holds 13 crested geckos, as well as two gargle geckos, a day gecko, and on the bottom there, you'll see a ball python and a corn snake. The first girl I'd like for you to meet is Echo. Now, Echo is one of my original crested geckos, and she is such a sweetheart. She's in a really beautiful bioactive enclosure, but out of the entire thing, her favorite spot is her coconut. Next to Echo, we have Skyland. Now, Skyland is my white and yellow reticulated gargoyle gecko, and she is produced by Phantom Gecko out of Chattanooga, Tennessee. Now, Skyland is about three years old now and has really developed into a really beautiful gecko. She also has the genetics to becoming phantomide, and I'm starting to see some of the evidence of that starting to develop in her. I know her parents developed that later in life, so that's going to be something really fun to get to watch. Her fired up stage is also really amazing. Next to Skyland, we have Snickers. Now, Snickers is one of my striped gargoyle geckos, and he is produced by Chris Jones out of New Creatures. And let me tell you, Snickers is just an amazing gecko. He's a little over three years old, and to my surprise, he's actually developing phantom eyes. Um, this guy was such a little tiny guy when I first got him at just a few grams. He's really turned into a fabulous gecko. Now, here's a little fun fact for you. When Snickers and Skyland are both fired up, you can tell that they have a lot of similarities. In fact, at first glance, these two like to play switcheroo on me all the time. Can you tell which one is which? Next up is Kiwi. Now, Kiwi is a Madagascar giant day gecko, and she is absolutely amazing. She has been such a fun species of geckos to get to work with. Now, when you think of this type of gecko, you might think of the Geico gecko. And as you know from those commercials, they are full of personality. Now, they are very much an observational species, but they are so much fun to watch during the day. You might catch her out front waving at me or playing a game of Twister. You never quite know with this girl, but definitely a favorite of mine. Next up is the magnificent Milo. Now, Milo is a tricolor crested gecko, and he is produced from Gecko Junkie out of Knoxville, Tennessee. And when I first saw Milo, he was literally the first gecko that I just stopped in my tracks when I saw him at the reptile show because I thought he was so beautiful. And if you look at his eyes, you can tell he's just captivating when he looks at you. Um, when he fires up, his colors are just vivid, and you can really clearly see that deep chocolate brown and the yellows in the cream color. He's really a beautiful gecko. Now, Milo is also one of my breeders, and uh, when you see some of the babies, you will also see some of these great uh, contrasting patterns and colors. 
And Milo's really funny right now because he's definitely in breeding mode. So anytime he sees the door open to his cage, he thinks he needs to come out for a visit. But as cute as he is, it's pretty easy to fall in love with this guy. Speaking of breeding, we're expecting. Crested geckos, that is. As I had mentioned in a prior video, this has been my first year breeding crested geckos, and that has been a really fun experience for me. Now, one product that I found that I really like using to incubate the eggs is the Pangea Hatch. Another thing that I wanted to share with you guys is how to candle an egg, because this was something that I really didn't know um, what I was looking for when I first started out with crested geckos. I'd had um, different people tell me to look for that Cheerio, but it really helped me to be able to visualize and see what I was looking for. So as you shine a flashlight on the back of an egg, in a fertile egg, you will be able to make out that red ring, which is the Cheerio that you're looking for. And that is something that you'll be able to spot and know that your egg is fertile. So let's take a break from crested geckos for a minute and find out what's been living in my backyard. Earlier this spring, I had an opportunity to start working with an eastern box turtle. Now, this is something that is near and dear to my heart because from a young child, my family raised box turtles and that's really something that helped develop the love that I have for reptiles today. So I'd like for you to meet Blackberry. Now, Blackberry is approximately between 7 and 10 years old. It's sort of hard to guesstimate with a box turtle, but he is such a fun guy to have around. Um, he's a fabulous eater, as you can tell. Um, he loves his worms. He loves squash, and uh, his favorite is Blackberry, so I guess you can figure out how he got his name that way. My husband and I built him a pen out in our backyard, as well as a little house that he absolutely loves to hang out in. The plants are starting to uh, grow now, which is great. Uh, that provides a lot more hiding places for him. Um, I've also planted some vegetables, some tomatoes and squash and some um, things that would be turtle friendly, so he has some things to forage on. But bottom line, I think Blackberry's pretty happy, and as he would say, I guess that's the end of the story. Next on the room tour, we have Choco. Now, Choco is a phantom pinstripe crested gecko, and one thing I love about this guy, of course, are his big floppy crest, but also, I love the portals he has on his side. I just think that makes him so unique. Now, Chaco also has one of the bioactive tanks in the room. Now, there are 101 reasons to love this guy. And yes, I'm talking about Pongo. Uh, he has got the most amazing Dalmatian pattern. I love the fact that he has the white, the black, and the red spots. Now, I've heard some people say it's a confetti pattern, but either way, he is one super Dalmatian. This next girl is Pumpkin Spice. Now, Pumpkin is produced from AC Reptiles, and she is a Halloween pinstripe gecko. And she may also have some of the soft scale genes, which is really cool. Now, one thing I love about Pumpkin is that she has a very deep pigmentation to her, and you'll really see that when she's fired up. She also has some of the really droopy crests that are so cute. And another thing that I think is a real standout from her, other than being a goofy, chunky monkey, is that she has a really wide dorsal pattern, which I think makes her very unique. Now, I just love this girl. Sometimes she just cracks me up at the funny situation she seems to find herself in. Next to Pumpkin is Cider. Now, cider is actually a birthday gift that I got from my mom and dad, so he is very special because of that. He also has that beautiful pinstripe and some of the harlequin pattern on him. Now, when he fires up, he has some really pretty colors that really kind of reminded me of apple cider, funny enough, and hence, that's how he got his name. 
Um, he is a little bit over a year old and is just packed full of personality and such a beautiful gecko. I really enjoy having him in the reptile room. This next guy is Coco. Now, Coco is one of the babies that I produced this past year out of Milo and Echo. And he has been a standout as well as a holdback for me. Now, one thing that I really loved about Coco is how I thought that he was a great representation of both of the parents. He's really got the structure, um, the crest, the harlequin pattern of Milo, but he has the cream coloration of his mom, Echo. And I love the fact that he was such a good representation of the breeding project this year. Overall, he is a phenomenal gecko and such a sweet boy. This next baby is Apollo. Now, Apollo is the number one baby that hatched out this year. And funny enough, he came blasting into this universe and even hatched in my hand. I don't think the boy has even looked back since. He is definitely the most flighty of all of the geckos in the room and most likely to jump. But one thing that I love about this guy are his eyelashes. He definitely has that grumpy cat look about him. Next to Apollo, we have Harley. Now, Harley is produced by Gecko Garden out of New York, and he is a high-contrast harlequin. We've thought that he might be a possible Halloween, though I'm not sure if he meets all of the criteria for that. But either way, he is a lovely gecko. He's got beautiful crest and just the most endearing eyes. And one thing that I think is so fun about Harley is that he's so interactive with me. Um, he will creep over his little log and peep out through the plants and always wants to see what's going on in the reptile room at night. This sweet baby's name is Cheesecake. Now, Cheesecake is one of the geckos that my grandson picked out of all of the geckos. He wanted one to be his own very special gecko. And funny enough, he won't let anybody else hold him. He absolutely adores Cheesecake. The next guy on the list is Latte. Now, if you hadn't figured out a name theme by now, I drink a lot of coffee. Now, Latte is a little bit of a shy gecko, but I call him Milo's mini-me because he is genetically a carbon copy of his father. Now, one thing that I have really enjoyed doing growing out these baby crested geckos is watching how the genetics plays out over time. Latte had some potential when he was first hatched, but... I have been absolutely amazed to see how the color progression and patterns come out as they mature. This next little guy is Twix. Now that I think of it, I also have a candy theme going on in the room. Well, this guy is a real cutie. He is a brindle baby with a little bit of a phantom pinstripe developing there. Now, when I first got him, he was so tiny, he didn't even register on my gram scale. He was the size of a penny. I think he's up to three grams now, but in his mind, he's big and tough, just like a bulldog. He loves to go exploring, and he's definitely going to be a fun gecko to watch as he gets older. Last but certainly not least of the crested geckos is Espresso. Now, one thing I love about Espresso is he has like a deep base color and it almost reminds you of a cup of Espresso. But he also has the more of the golden yellow kind of deeper orange tones to um, his head. And I really like that contrast. Another unique thing about Espresso that you really can't see in the video is that he has some black spots on his side. To me, that's kind of a genetic surprise and... I love things that are unique. It really makes a gecko extra special to me. He is such a sweet boy, and it has been such a great experience getting to breed crested geckos this year. Okay, who is ready to see some snakes? I'd like for you to meet Hershey. Now, Hershey is my two-year-old normal morph ball python. 
and she is such a sweetheart. Hershey was a rescue for me, and when I got her, she had a lot of issues. Uh, she had a lot of eye issues, as well as she was not eating at all. In fact, the prior owner actually had taken her to the vet and had her force-fed at one point. I was able to work with Hershey, and starting with assist feeding, on to getting her to eat on her own, which was just really amazing. Now she eats rats, and you can tell that she's doing really well now. Such a sweetheart, so curious, and a great snake to have. This next girl in the room is Candy Corn. Now, Candy Corn is an albino corn snake. She's about two and a half years old now, and I believe the last time I measured her, she's about 36 inches long. Now, I love corn snakes. I think that they're probably one of the most phenomenal pet snakes out there. I love them because they're easy to handle. They're very curious. They're great for kids. They eat well. They're not aggressive. Um, to me, they're just the champion of pet snakes. Uh, candy corn is definitely a favorite when I take her out to educational shows. The kids just love her. Another cool thing I wanted to show you is candy corn going into shed. Now, you've heard of a snake going into blue, but have you heard of a snake going into pink? That's the benefit of having an albino snake. Now that you've met the crested geckos and turtle and snakes, let's move on to some of the other animals in the room. Our next stop in the room is with Nova. Now, Nova is one of my leopard geckos, and she is a snow morph. And boy, is she such a pretty girl. Sometimes she's gotten the nickname Nosy Nova because she is so funny and wants to know everything happening in the room. If I'm working at my desk, she wants to know what's going on. If I'm preparing food for other animals, she has to know all about it. And she has been such a fun leopard gecko for me to have. Uh, she is one that was actually rehomed to me uh, from a friend of mine whose geckos were actually just not getting along. And um, that's a really good point in that even though you can house several females together with leopard geckos, it's always good to have a backup plan because there's times that, just like siblings, they won't get along. And it's best to separate the animals, which it was in Nova's case. But I have to say, she has really become one of my favorite leopard geckos. Uh, I love those dark eyes and just packed full of personality. As we transition to the other side of the room, uh, this wall holds two Pac-Man frogs, three leopard geckos, an emerald swift, and a jeweled lacerta. Above these tanks, I have some of the artwork that's special to me, as well as photographs from some of the trips that I've taken, like uh, when I got to visit Gulf World down in Panama City. And my favorite trip of all times that I've gotten to take is to Clearwater Marine Aquarium and to get to see winter in person. The first tank on this side of the wall is my albino Pac-Man frog, and his name is Oscar the Grouch. And believe me, he gets it for good reason. When I first got this little guy, he was so stubborn. He wanted to sit behind his little piece of cork bark, and he wouldn't come out for anybody. So we nicknamed it his trash can. Eventually, he came along and decided that uh, eating on the other side of the log was a good thing. Now, if you know much about these Pac-Man frogs, they are sit-and-wait predators. Uh, they're also called horn frogs, but they normally bury themselves down in the ground, and all you see is their little eyes. And when that prey item comes by, that mouth is open, closed, just like a Pac-Man. Next to Oscar, we have Sophie. Now, Sophie is a Max Snow leopard gecko, and she's about five and a half years old now. Now, one thing I love about these little leopard geckos is how they are really cat-like in a way. I always say that bearded dragons are the dog lizards and uh, leopard geckos are more cat-like in their behavior. They creep around at night and, and look at everything. And what's so cute is when they get excited about a prey item, they will actually shake their little tail before they pounce on it. 
Now, Sophie is a bit of a picky eater, and she really loves her wax worms. That's one thing that you can always count on her accepting and makes it a little bit challenging sometimes to try to sneak in other variety like roaches or crickets or something that is a little bit more nutritious. But she is a funny gecko. Uh, she tends to have a royalty status about her and likes to look down at her royal subjects and make sure that they're all in the place that they need to be. I love this girl. She is such a sweetheart and such a joy to have in the room. This next boy is Gizmo. Now, what can I say about this guy other than the fact his smile just says it all? Now, one thing that Gizmo loves to do is hang out in his cave there. He will crawl up in it and then just poke his little head out. And it looks just like a little turtle sitting there. Uh, just the cutest thing ever. He is very active uh, during the day. He loves to creep around and explore. He will climb up on top of his rock hide and uh, look around. Now, one thing about uh, Gizmo is that I've had an opportunity to raise him from the time that he was just a little baby. And that's been a really fun experience because um, a lot of times when you see the baby uh, leopard geckos, you will notice that they have the, the band stripings on their back and they will have some spots, but nothing like the spot pattern that they will develop as an adult. Of course, as they grow, those bands start to separate and that's when you start seeing their uh, mature spot pattern develop. It's really a, a neat thing to get to observe. Now, under Gizmo's tank is Goku or Super Saiyan Goku from Dragon Ball Z, as my grandson might say. But let me tell you, he is a big hoss. I had no idea that leopard geckos got this big, but compared to all of the other leopard geckos I have in the room, this guy is huge. And he's very much a gentle giant. He has a very laid-back temperament about him. He just kind of leisurely meanders around his tank at night and will just very casually eat his worm like, oh, okay, it's no big deal. He is the cutest gecko, though. Every time I look over at him, he's got the sweetest smile. This next girl is Emma. Now, Emma is an emerald swift lizard, and they are not very common to see in the pet trade. But she is a beautiful girl. The females are more of a solid green, whereas one thing about the males is that they will have this beautiful blue throat to them. Uh, now one thing about these guys is they are quick. They are very much observational animals, but so fun to watch. They also tend to have like some bearded dragon characteristics in the fact that they will sort of puff up and head bob if they see a predator that might be approaching in the room. Next to Emma is Pixel. Now Pixel is what I would call a lazy Pac-Man frog. <laughs> and he loves to sit in the dirt buried up to his eyeballs. In fact, you almost never see him except for these big black eyes just peering at you as you walk by. Uh, you can find him uh, sometimes chilling in his water dish, but most of the time he likes to dig himself a little hidey hole and is pretty content to stay there until the magical worm falls from the sky. And at that point, the true excitement begins. Uh, he opens and closes his mouth. Yes, folks, that is the excitement of a Pac-Man frog, but we love them. This next guy is Patrick. Now, Patrick is a jewel Lacerta lizard, and these are not very common to see as well, though I really hope that they will gain popularity because they are such an amazing lizard. Uh, he's got this beautiful green color to him, and as you'll notice, he's got a little forked tongue, very similar to a snake. Uh, you may think that he has uh, some skink-like characteristics to him, but temperament wise he's very much a lizard and they even have a little bit of a bearded dragon characteristic in the fact that they're very calm uh, you can get them out and hold them now the little uh 
dots on his back are almost like little beads. It's very soft to be able to touch his skin. And it almost reminds me, if you've ever seen like an Indian purse, uh, how the little colored beads are all together to make a pattern. That's very much uh, what his back looks like. And I thought it was so unique. I really think he is a stunning lizard. And another cool thing about them is they have these big long toes and the longest tail. Now, Patrick is hysterical. He is so inquisitive and so curious. Every day he goes out on his little hunt in the tank and he slinks around everywhere and looking here and low. Of course, he's looking for insects as well, but the one thing that he loves to do the most is dig. And did I say dig and dig and dig? And if mama's not looking, I really like to dig. So just as soon as I have my back turned, you guessed it, my plant destroyer attacks again. You just have to love this guy. One of the best lizard species around. Yes, can you believe it? To be continued. Don't worry, in tonight's video, you got to see three of the four walls of the reptile room. Let me tell you, there are so many animals in this room that it's hard to pack them all into one video. And I thought it would be important to break this into two parts so that we could sort of focus on different animals at a time. Now tonight we got to see part one, which had a good part of crested geckos and leopard geckos, as well as a few different species that you hadn't gotten to meet before. And our next video is going to be released on Friday night at 7 p.m. Um, Eastern Standard Time. And uh, we're going to start with the betta fish and go through my green frog, red-eyed croc skink, uh, Jackson chameleon. You'll get to meet all of the bearded dragons and maybe even a few furry friends. So I think it's definitely one to uh, stay tuned and look forward to. So I will see you guys on Friday night. Thank you so much for watching part one. I uh, can't wait to share with you part two, and I hope you have a wonderful week. God bless. See you next time.